Jones, um, Adam, my friend, and if you can give me your semi-undivided attention, I'm happy with that. Um, so, motor installation. Now, we know how the motors are work and how the control is. How do you install these motors? A couple of things, guys, that you need to pay attention to determine the amp rating of various motors from the MEC code book. Adam, you have done that many times. Here you go. Sorry. No big deal. So you need, for motors, guys, they use the amp from the NEC code book. This is review, what we did. The amp from the NEC code book for everything except the overload. Determine the conductor size. You guys have been doing that really good for single and three phase motors. Determine the conductor size for uh, for multi motors. This is called the feeder. Feeder, and guess what? You guys have done it uh, last week and you will be tested on it next week. Sizing the overload. We have to size the overload. Uh, circuit breaker, determining the circuit breaker for single phase and three phase motor, as well as for multi motor installation, which is basically a feeder, or we call it feeder, multi motor installation. You guys have done that one. This is basically what this chapter is. Now, Adam, my friend, when it comes to motors, you have to go to the NEC and find the full load current for all these motors based on their time. For example, if you have a DC motor, you have to go to this table. If you have a single phase motor, here's your table. If it's uh, uh, this is two phase, God forbid, two phase motor, this is your table. And the three phase motor, this is your table. You guys have been there many times, so I'm not worried about this. I'll show you these tables in a second, too. So um, from these tables, guys, you can find that um, a single uh, one horsepower motor, if you burn that baby at 90 uh, volt DC, it will give you this amount of amps, 12.2 amps. The same horsepower motor, if you almost treble the voltage, uh, it will give you this amount of amps. So Karen, um, typically if you look at these tables, guys, the common denominator, if you have a motor, for example, at 120, they give you 10 amps. If you burn it at 240, it will give you 5 amps, roughly half. Every time you increase the voltage, the current will be dropped by the proportion of the increase. So that's just observation. Um, okay, all these tables, guys, are for normal, so called it normal speed torque. If you have a different speed torque, then you have to use an template. So you, you use the NDC code book for motors that run at normal speed, normal torque. If you have a multi, uh, if you have a low speed or a high torque or a multi speed motor, uh, nameplate full load current, full load current must be used. I can't emphasize this one. If your motor, you guys don't deal with it, what electricians do. If you have a 1200 RPM motor or less, um, yeah, or high torque motors, then you have to use a name blade for everything. Karen, uh, in the past, they used to have something called two phase system. Here is the two phase system. The two phase system, there is 90 degree, there are 90 degree out of phase, as you probably can see here. 90 degree, these are 90 degree out of phase. <clears throat> instead of 120 or 180. That's just a system that we used to use. Three phase motors, guys, uh, full load current is determined from this table. You can look at it. If you have a synchronous motor, the synchronous motor guys are, and you over excite them, so the power factor um, uh, is different, then you have to increase them based on the multipliers at the bottom of this table. Table 430.250, you're gonna look at them. Um, there's an increase that you have to do based on the uh, uh, power factor. When we determine the conductor size, Karen, you have done that many times with your friend Chad. You multiply the full load current by 125. You got to consider the temperature rating of the devices, typically 75 degree column, but you also have to verify that one. And if you got for if you're using any of these 60 degree rated, uh, 60 degree. Um, Celsius rated conductors, then you have to use the column that deals with 60. For us guys being engineers, um, typically most of the equipment are rated for 75. The lugs, so Adam, if you look at these lugs right here, these lugs are rated for 75 degrees Celsius. They can handle a lot of heat. So when we size them. Okay, overload. When we size the overload, guys, and you have done it with your friend Chad, and we will be reviewing for the test next week, Karen. I'm going to go over it. You'll see. Uh, when we size the overload, you have to use the um, nameplate, nameplate full load current, very important. And two factors will play 
uh, service factor, if your service factor is 1.15 or more, or if your temperature rise is 40 degrees Celsius or less, if, then you use 1.25 multiplier. All other cases, others, other cases you use 1.15. You guys will be tested on that next week. All this information is coming directly from 430.32. Comments, questions, my friend. I'm moving a little bit fast on that one because Adam, it's a review for you. Not a whole lot. Locked rotor currents. The locked rotor current guess there is a table that you can use to get the locked rotor currents for for A, A, A and B. Uh, there's also a table that can get you that rated for NEMA design codes. If you have a NEMA design code, when you have NEMA design codes, you can use table 430.251 to get the locked rotor current. The locked rotor current is designed by the bar determine the lock rotor current, the bars that they build. And the lock rotor current, guys, is an indication of the starting capability of the torque, the torque and the starting capability of the motor. Um, when it comes to the short circuit protection, Adam, we are going to use different types. We have non-time non delay fuse, dual element time delay fuse, instantaneous uh, trip, as well as uh, inverse type. And based on these, your multiplier can be one point, uh, this one 75, uh, no, this is one, 1 1.75. This will be uh, three, uh, this will be, I believe eight, and this will be 2.5 multiplier. Uh, you find the standard non-adjustable circuit breakers from this table. Um, and by designated letter assigned by NEMA. So squirrel cage motors have a NEMA uh, design letters next to them okay so that's basically what the, the rest of them guys uh, multi-motor calculation there's an example about um, uh, calculating the feeder for a 440 three phase with a dual element protected by dual element time delay fuse with a conductor tsf chan dual element each motor is to be protected with dual element time delay fuse and an overload and you're you are to calculate the uh, feeder for them um, you guys, I'm not going to go over this, Karen, because we've done it many times. Here's my motor here. Motor full load M is here. Um, you can find the overload. Here's my overload based on the equipment, based on that information here. And here's the size of your fuse, obviously, from the NEC code book, these tables, and here's the size of your conductors. You guys have done this with, with your friend Chad, and we will be doing it. Uh, um, more so motor number one the same thing guys the nameplate has all this information based on this information we can size the overload as well as the fuse which is coming directly from the tables as well as a conductor so and we did all the calculation for this motor number three adam same thing you have a motor number three a service factor uh, 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 motor, uh, the, the motor amps, this one varies for motor 3, the implant. It's a synchronous motor because of the power factor, guys, is 90. You multiply the amps by 1.10, 1.1. 1. Uh, 1. Uh, you increase your motor amps by 1.1, and then you start using this number for your calculation. For your calculation. The last thing you you do, Karen, is you bring all these into a, a gutter, right? And then you branch out of these, and that will be the size of your feeder and the size of the overcaptation device for your feeder. The size of the feeder and the size of the overcaptation device for your feeder. Any comments, guys? Any questions about sizing these feeders, Derek? Next week, guys, we will be going doing the example um, that we uh, for them because we will be. We will be tested on that. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show. Let me go over here. This is just a couple of uh, showing the the um, the signal for a, a two-phase system with a 90-degree shift between them. We talked about all the calculation that used, and we will be doing more of these guys too. All the system that you're going to use, all the calculation, uh, the feeder. You can see how the tab, all these feeders, and uh, uh, not over 10 feet tab and not over 25 feet tab. We talked about the tab rules. Um, okay, and the rest, guys, are the tables that we use. Um, this happened to be the full load amp for the DC motors and where you find them. This is the two, the single phase, uh, the two phase, 
And of course, this is my, I'm sorry, this is my single phase. And this is my two phase. And you guys have seen, of course, the three phase and all of them. I want to bring to attention, guys, to the bottom. Do you see the bottom, Karen? There's 1.1 and 1.25 uh, for uh, a power factor of 90 and 80%. Okay, and then the rest of them, guys, is your overload multipliers based on the service factor of 115 or larger, um, 40 or less, and one. Uh, and if it's any, if it's not any of these two, you have the 115. So either 125 or 115 based on the two factors. You guys will be tested on that one. Different uh, combination. Here's how you find the lock torque current, guys, by the multiplier on the test next week. Uh, Adam, you guys will be going to all of these, so I'm not worried too much. Um, multipliers for the fuses, you guys have done many of them uh, for over the last couple of projects and you will be doing, everybody knows how to use this table, I hope by now. The standard sizes that you use right here, 240.6, all the standard non-adjustable. Uh, we talked about the overload stuff. This is just reviewing all these uh, stuff that we do for overload. Induction for load, two phase, induction motors and what's not. Okay, the, um, these ones, guys, are the um, full load three-phase uh, induction type motors. We got that. I thought we have one. Uh, okay, so we talk about four. Okay, single-phase motors. Okay, 51. Talked about all these. Lock torture current. Why do I have them twice? I don't know. All right. So that's basically... We have more than that. Basically, it. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Comments, questions about that? So, uh, what we're going to do, Matt, next week, like I said, maybe on Tuesday or Thursday, you guys will be tested on this information. Um, like I've done in the past, I'll go over the an example of what we're going to be tested on to refresh your mind. But this chapter, consider a care and review of what we have done in the calc. Does that make sense? Review of what we have done in the calc. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Comments, questions? Yes, no? Okay. That's all we have. So what I'm hoping, guys, today you will um, you will finish importing and start laying out your, um, your fixtures and circuiting them and switching them. Please pay attention to the switching mechanism that they're asking you to do. Either there are no low-voltage switches, there are occupancy sensor or high-voltage switches. Uh, we don't typically use in the industrial building as a lot of um, freeway switches. Um, so you're going to be doing um, single, um, uh, no three-way switches. So one location. That's it.